Hi everyone, Boots Allen here again. Uh, going to go and actually tie a dry fly for the first time in a while. The, uh, we're going to go a little bit old school, a little bit new school. We're going to tie a double humpy, and that double humpy is going to have rubber legs as well, so a bit of mix of natural materials and synthetic materials. This is a fly that we use uh, primarily for, for stone flies. Um, in the region I live in, one of the kind of most anticipated hatches is for a stone fly known as the Clasenia. Uh, we also call it the mutant stone. It's a, kind of related to a golden stone. It's got a rather large body. The males do not have wings, so when they're on the water, they're running like crazy. Um, and uh, the double humpy itself was developed back in the early, early 1980s, right around 1981. Um, and has been used for, uh, for stoneflies uh, ever since. And that's what we're going to tie now. I've got a size 8 hook in here. You can go up to a size 6. You can go down to a size 10. If you're brave enough, you can go to a size, uh, size 12 or 14. We're going to go with a size 8. Let me get my thread attached here. We're going to use some deer hair. And this is deer hair coming from the facial and neck region of mule deer. And that's a very hollow hair, so it's incredibly buoyant. Very, very buoyant. Not foam buoyant, but still pretty solidly buoyant. Downside of that material is it's kind of brittle. Uh, so it does, you know, after, it takes quite a few fish to eat uh, before it starts to, you can start to get tears in those hair, in that hair. Um, uh, but the upside is it's, uh, it has that buoyancy, and that's pretty important on these higher gradient streams where these, uh, these fl uh, f uh, flies live. Trim off some of this for the tail first, and what you're going to see is we're basically forming a double humpy. I'm going to reach over here, drop this into a hair stacker. Boop, 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 boop. Give that a few taps. See if they evened out some. They evened out fairly decent. I'm going to grab that from in there. Get some of that fur out of there. Of course, you can use a fine toothed comb to assist you with that. I'm going to tie that in just like so. And I'm using some pretty heavy tying thread here and the main reason is your thread is going to be your ventral material, the bottom of the fly. So um, this will take fewer wraps, you'll be able to build up a pretty sizable uh, uh, ventral section of this without having to do your wrap after wrap after wrap with 6 aught or 8 aught thread. Got that there. I'm going to give this a snip and lift that piece there. Get that snipped off. And let's tie those butt sections down. All right. Now we're going to get another piece of this. And again, this is a fairly simple fly. So cut some of that deer hair off again, a little on the full bodied side, so I'm going to pull some of it out. Get that into the hair stacker. <laughs> Drop her on in, give her some taps. Cross fairly even. Trim off some of those hairs. Get this forward. I'm going to tie her in right about so. 
Now let's tie this on back to there. And now let's just wrap forward so we're covering the whole shooting match. Really getting her wrapped down nice and even. I'm going to look under there. That's pretty well covered. Now we're going to grab some of that, pull it forward to form that rear body. Alright, so we got that body formed. If you look here, you'll see there's no space between the back, or that, that, that rear body, and that tail material. You can also leave a gap right here, where you have a definite, there's a thread gap between the tail and that body, and that's all, all up to you. I know some very good tires that decide to do it. That way, folks that can that still tie humpies these days, that's what uh, that's what they'll do. I'm gonna try and pull as much of that hair as I can back. There's gonna be a couple of pieces of hair still there. We're just gonna stand that stand that wing up almost in a clump style like so. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a cut. Got that trimmed. Bring that thread on back. So you got a clump wing right there. Almost parachute style, but we didn't wrap it around parachute style. This is where we're going to tie in a couple of our legs. I'm going to go with white legs. And uh, then I'm going to, at the end here, I'm going to spackle these a bit with some black, uh, black marker. And so this is just your regular round rubber. You can get the really, really fine stuff as well if you're using something small or tying up a small pattern. Get these separated. Get that leg tied in right there. Boom. Get another leg out of there. Get this next leg tied in just like so. So we got those legs in there. I'm going to grab uh, some hackle here. This is just grizzly hackle, probably silver grade. I would bet. And uh, when you're doing this hackle, and of course you can do it any way you want to, but um, I almost like to just, I mean, want to at least meet the size of the hook. I'm here on my hackle gauge, um, and there I'm meeting it. If I'm not meeting it, then I want it to be somewhat oversized. And again, that's for the, uh, um, uh, that's just going to really, you know, help with the, uh, the uh, buoyancy of the fly, uh, you know, in combo with the deer hair. So, tied that little, stripped away some of the butt sections, or some of the, the quills to form a butt section. Have that tied in where the legs are. I'm going to come forward of the legs, tie it down like so, and then I'm going to lift all of that. And wrap that there. Okay. And now we're going to begin to wrap this material. And I'm going to do quite a few wraps. And the original humpy was really the Horner's deer hair. That was the first humpy. And uh, Jack Horner, who tied that fly, uh, he did one or two wraps 
behind the wing, one or two wraps in front of the wing. And this one, we use a lot of it, and a lot of that just comes down to what, uh, a lot of it comes down to what kind of water uh, you're fishing. If it's low gradient, you want something a bit more finer. These higher gradient streams like we have here, you want them a bit more uh, full bodied. Boom. So that was several wraps. That might have been around eight to ten wraps right there. Now we're going to tie off that hackle. Boom. Get that nipped. And now I'm going to, I kind of want to leave that deer hair wing up there. And I'm just going to pull this back some. I just really am trying not to tie down too much of this material with my thread wraps. Boom. And then I'm going to go in and just give that little bit of a butt section a nip right there. There, boom. All right. Now I'm going to take my thread and really bring her back some. All right. Get that squeezed up against that rear body a bit. Wrap it forward now a tad. And now we're going to cut some more deer hair out of here. And what we did here is what we're going to do up here. We're basically repeating the process. Get that into the hackle stacker. Hackle stacker. Hair stacker. Let's see if we've done to even them out some. We're going to find out. Fairly even. Grab that, pull her on out. And this one's about as thick as I want it to be, so no need to pull any more of that out of there. All right, now I'm just going to move some of that material back so you can tie in this next bit of the body. Wrapping that right on back there, like so, and then get it really tight so you don't got too much space between the body. I'm going to wrap that forward again, trying to cover up as much of that material as possible. Trim up some of that, and some of that, some of that. I'll end her right there. Now you're going to grab that hair, try to grab as much of it as you can. You should have some good separation between this hair and what you have in the back there, and that looks about right. All right. Now we're going to get some legs tied in there again. Cut off some more of this. And once again, we got just this little bit of leg there. Peeled one off. I'm going to peel off a second one. I got my two legs. Get that leg tied in on the right side. Cinch it down maybe a tad. Square it up again. Let's get the next one in there.
Now we're going to grab some more hackle here. There we go. And again, I'm just going to go to the hackle gauge, and by God, I'm right on it again. Get some of that webbed material out of there, because and we're now down to where it's a bit more finer. Get that tied in again. Give that a lift. I'm going to wrap this thread forward a bit, right about there. And then you can see where that quill is sticking out. Just a little. Okay. And now let's start wrapping. I'm going to actually turn her just a bit. There we go. Six wraps there. Now get the legs out of there. Now just bring her forward. Now you're in front of the entire fly. And so that's six wraps in the front there. And I'm just going to do a couple more. nip off the excess. And now I'm going to pull all that material back as much as I can. Kaboom. Maybe that piece right there. A little bit. There we go. Here I'm going to whip finish it. We're not quite done with it yet. Get that nipped. And then on my side, you probably can't see it, I'm going to go ahead and lift it. You'll see a couple little hairs sticking out right there, just uneven, not where you want them to be. So I'm going to go in there really close and give those a nip. Trying not to cut any of the material, especially the legs. Now we're going to just spackle these legs, create some segmentation. So I'm going to grab all four of these legs. I'm going to turn this like so. Get out my marker, just a regular Sharpie. Uh, And we got those nice and marked up. I'm going to trim these down, maybe leaving a little bit of white at the end. Do the same on the other side. And we'll do the same. Snip. Snip. 
And there you have it. The uh, some tires would like to take that hackle at the bottom, right there, and they like to trim that flush. That creates a low line fly, just line more in the film. And I do not like to do that because part of the thing about this fly is the movement. The more hackle you have there when your fly moves, when you're moving your fly through the water, be it just dragging or be it you purposely putting some moves in it, um, all that hackle creates a wake that's very, very similar to that of a stone fly. Um, and if anything, those, these legs might actually kind of get in the way of that. So that's why uh, the double humpy without the legs is still worth, uh, is still worth, uh, worth using because those legs don't get in the way, but that still creates a pretty mean wake. So that is your rubber-legged double humpy.